Good morning, everybody. We are moving along, moving right along to day three candidates at right guard. And very quickly, you're going to start to understand why I'm so uninterested in guys like Osiris, Torrance, and Steve Avila. It's largely because of guys like the guys we're going to talk about today. And um, the guys in this video, in particular, strike me as being so much more value-heavy, so much more appealing than those two guys I talked about yesterday that I, I just can't get behind it. So a couple guys in this video especially strike me as great candidates to be drafted as future, maybe even current Seahawks right guards. And later today, we're going to have more videos with more prospects that honestly, I, I, I mean, I'm not saying they're better than Torrance. That would be crazy. I'm not saying they're better than Avila, but value? Yeah, I think the value is often better. So I'm going to start here with Emil Echior Jr. of the Alabama Crimson Tide. 23 years old. This is a guy who might go day two. It's possible. As of right now, the aggregate has him going mid-round four, but several big boards have him in the top 100, so he might end up being a day two pick. Um, he is an Alabama player. There is going to be a little bit of inherent bias there, I guess you could say, but as of right now, I would say probably not, but keep an eye out for it. It's possible. Six foot two and a half, 314 pounds, almost 34 inch arms, nine and a half inch hands, only did bench press at the Combine. 23 bench press reps was decent. Um, like I said, all the big boards that he's actually on have him in the... The major big boards have him in the top 100, except for PFF. And PFF actually has him in like the late 5th. So they don't really like him that much, I guess. But the aggregate says mid-4th. I'm hoping that's the case. He graded out pretty good overall in 2022, 73.3. 70 run, 80 pass, 70 zone, 64-ish gap. Only allowed eight hurries on the year, no hits, no sacks. So pretty clean numbers. Emil Echior might be my favorite right guard in this draft in terms of value. I'm not going to say he's better than the guys we spoke on yesterday. But I do believe the value is significantly better. And more than that, I think the fit is better. Emil could start. Day one at right guard for the Seahawks in 2023. And I think he would fit perfectly with our offensive scheme and be able to do all the things that we want him to do. He's powerful in driving defensive linemen in the run game. He's somebody who opens up holes, uses his leg drive to push defensive linemen back to open up that gap for the running back. He plays with a brutal physicality. He's got that mean streak you want in an offensive lineman. He's also got good awareness when it comes to picking up blitzes. He's got a good understanding of keeping his head on a swivel and understanding where the blitz is coming from and being able to pick it up, even if it's a blitz done by a guy who's maybe as much as 100 pounds lighter than him. He's got good lateral agility when he's at the second level. When he peels out of his phone booth and goes on the move and starts hunting linebackers at the second level, he's good at it. He's skilled at reach blocks. This is a guy who is a right guard. That's what he played at Alabama. And that's what I think he'll do in the NFL. But he has lateral agility and movement skills. He can hit reach blocks. He can work to the second level. That's why I like him so much. That's why I honestly think he's not, be again, not better than Torrance, but a better fit. He's got a strong anchor against bull rushes as well, so it's not like he's giving up a ton in the strength category. He uses his hands well. He latches well. He lets he, he grabs on and doesn't let go. And I mean that in a good way, not the penalty way. Um, and look, Alabama's had some great offenses over the last several years. He's been a part of some really special offenses at Alabama. It has to be said. The issues with Emil, sometimes he gets engaged and then he loses his balance. Um, his, you know, like I said, he's got good hands, like he, his hands are like pliers, but sometimes he'll, he'll lose balance after getting locked up with a defensive lineman and it causes him to eventually lose the rep. Sometimes he's shed a little too quickly because of it. I do think his use of hands is good in this regard, like I said, but 
I think that sometimes he uh, loses his balance. He can be a little over eager and aggressive at times, loses uh, balance in op- the open field because he he just he's a little too excited to get out in space and go hit somebody. He does need some technique work in terms of things like footwork and keeping like his body over his legs, keeping everything you know together when he's moving around out there. It's little things that can be coached up though. And I do believe that what he brings to the table as an athlete is much more intriguing, especially given the likely draft position, than just getting a traditional right guard that can only play in the phone booth. So this is the kind of right guard I'd be willing to invest a valuable pick in. I would honestly take him in the third, but he's a dream on day three. This is a, I would even spend that day two pick on him, no cap. Okay, so next guy here, and this is a guy who I'm going to feel somewhat similarly about. I can't go all the way with it for a couple reasons, but Andrew Voorhees of USC is another guy who I look at and I go, well, first of all, let me me say this. Andrew Voorhees may end up as a left guard in the NFL. He played left guard at USC and he was good at it. He has the skill set of a left guard, so that may very well end up being what he does. I personally think he will probably end up at right because I think that's a little more suiting his skill set, but it could go either way. So think of it this way. Andrew Voorhees might be a stealth left guard prospect. So 24 years old, on the older side, not great. 6'6", 310 pounds, 32 and 1 8 inch arms, kind of short, 10 inch hands, 29 inch vert, 8 foot 9 inch broad, and a combine leading 38 bench press reps, and he did it with a torn ACL. So you're not going to find a guy with uh, strength like this anywhere else in this draft, I don't think. Uh, or Well, you know, maybe like a Jalen Carter, right? Somebody who didn't do combine stuff. Um, a couple big boards have him going at the back end of the second day. Most have him going, I think, in day three. And the injury, I think, kind of sealed it. Like him tearing his ACL at the combine pretty much guarantees that he's going to be a day three pick. He might slip to the fifth round. And look, the fact that he's not really going to be able to play much, if at all, as a rookie is a problem, especially when he's already 24 years old. The development that it's going to cost him is a problem. But I feel like there's an opportunity to get tremendous value here because of that torn ACL. I I think his combine with the bench presses was going to push him into that day two conversation at the very least and then he got hurt uh he was graded out well in 2022 about an 82 overall 80 pass about 82 and a half against the run elite as a zone offensive lineman uh 65 gap not great his uh, protection numbers weren't stellar but were pretty good he's playing for that usc offense that does pass the ball quite a bit so you're going to put up a little bit of an inflated number there so andrew Voorhees. Look, you can put him in a zone scheme or a gap scheme. You can play him at left guard. You can play him at right guard. Maybe there's some center upside here. I think he has a chance to be successful anywhere, almost. Like, don't put him at tackle, right? Don't get me wrong. His arms are too short. But generally speaking, he's very versatile. He has a chance to succeed in almost any situation. He's really, he's like a jack of all trades. Very well balanced as a prospect. I mean, if you you know, make a list of uh, traits, speed, agility, acceleration, strength. He's plus in all of them. He opens up holes in the run game. This is not a guy who just walls off. This is not a guy who just uh, depends on a double team to open up holes. No, he's opening up holes. Those 38 bench press reps do not lie. He's got that mean streak you like to see in an offensive lineman. He's got a great latch with his hands. He grabs on, doesn't let go. Um, He positions his hands pretty well, I think, where... He doesn't let it get outside the pads. He doesn't let it get to the point where he can get flagged. He's got good footwork when he's mirroring a pass rusher. He's good in space and at the second level. So if you have him pulling across the line, he can do that well. If you have him pushing up to the second level to block linebackers, he does that. His anchor is really strong. If you bull rush into him, he's just going to take it on. He's just going to... Uh, he, he's going to hold you hostage basically there. He's got a nice punch when he's uh, engaged in a battle with a defensive lineman. So, a lot of positive traits. Now, there are a decent number of things to be apprehensive about. 
He's not a great athlete. The speedier interior linemen are going to give him trouble, which makes me want to move him to right guard maybe even more because when he's at right guard, he's not going to have to worry about that as much. It can lean more on his strength, which I do think is probably his best asset. He can lose the leverage battle a little bit because he's so tall, which we don't love. Obviously, 6'6 is a problem. He needs to learn how to get a little bit lower. He, I think he's good at the second level, but his feet are a little bit slow. And I do think the further he gets away from the line of scrimmage, the less effective he is. But it's not an Osiris Torrance situation where I feel like it's completely useless once you have him leave the phone booth. No, he's a plus um, player when leaving the phone booth. Just, I don't think he's great at it. Um, and of course, the injury he suffered at the Combine. He's not going to get to develop as much his rookie year. He's already 24 years old. Like... Things have been stunted just a little bit here by this injury, and it's unfortunate because I really like this guy as a prospect. So, <clears throat> that being said, I think you're going to get the value. The value is going to be right because of the injury. So, you have a chance to get an offensive line prospect this good and this versatile in day three, maybe round five. Because of that injury, you got to do it. I think he's basically clean, maybe not clean, but he's good in all physical attributes and mental attributes you could be looking for in an interior offensive lineman. And the fact that he may end up as a good left guard as well only increases that value. I would take him in the fourth. I don't think you need to, but I would take him in the fourth and feel like I'm getting my money's worth because I think he'll recover from the injury. It wasn't an Achilles. It was an ACL, I believe. And if he does recover, I think you're getting a really nice lineman. All right, more coming later today. See you guys later. Go Hawks.